Uh, ben in Charlotte, thanks for waiting. Hey, how you doing, Matt? Good. How are you? I'm great, man. I just want to say this is a really awesome show. Uh, thanks. I'm a big fan of it. You're doing really good work out there. Uh, for a lot of who are atheists who can't come out, this kind of gives uh, comfort to people. Cool. Should I hang up now just in case we're about to disagree? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we're good. What do you want to know, Ben? Um, I just want to know your opinion on uh, William Lane Craig, because I know you challenged him to a debate. Um, I, I'd love to whatever debate. Happened I'd love to debate Craig, but he won't debate anybody who doesn't have a Ph.D., or at least that's my understanding of what's been relayed to me. Um, there was some talk about it possibly happening on a couple of occasions. Uh, I, I debated somebody on some podcast somewhere who, and, and a member of Craig's team, or I don't even know, was... Handlers? Yeah, yeah, I seem to recall that there was some communication of some kind kind of happening, or maybe I'm... Yeah, I have no that. idea if he even knows who I am. So, I mean, you know, he and I have never spoken or met, um, and it's not like I've emailed him directly, but um, I, I'd love to, because I've seen people debate him and not do particularly well, because they kind of let him get away with his... I'm going to define all the terms, and I'm going to use these specific definitions, and I'm going to tell you exactly what my opponent must do in order to win. And, you know, and evidently he always goes first, or it seems that way. Um, and, you know, my opening would be to basically say that his opening is a crock. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I don't have to do all these things to win. He's basically shifting the burden of proof and defining things in a way so that he can construct his standard scripted position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like what uh, Lawrence Krauss said about him in a debate. He says, uh, basically, careful because first chance William Lane Craig gets, he's going to lie. <laughs> you think? I thought that was very good. I'm, uh, I, I, don't, I don't like to presume the motivations of people. Um, right. And, you know, like I've said before, uh, first of all, I, I won't debate Ray Comfort ever again. Uh, because, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> but uh, also, there are people who say, "Oh, he's just a liar," or you know, he's just doing this for the money. And and they're saying they've said that about pretty much every apologist you can think of, including oh. some of the people like Sai that I'm going to be debating uh, in the near future. And I can't read people's minds, and I don't know what their actual motivations are. I can, I can say that on many occasions it appears that they are lying uh, because they've had things explained to them and yet they keep mm -hmm. coming back to the same things. But it doesn't make any difference. It's, I, I would like to do the debate uh, just because I enjoy doing debates and getting information out. I, I, I mean, I don't think that they're lying to us. I think on some level they lie to themselves. Well, it's, it's, irrational things it's, a dishonest, it's a dishonest strategy generally what's being employed. Uh, I think Craig is, does what's called presuppositional apologetics. No. And no, he doesn't. He's not Psy the does. Psy does that. Well, but I think it might be, it might have been what the precepts do. It might have been inspired by some of Craig's uh, theatrics. But, um, but that particular approach is essentially a, a, a huge exercise in avoiding meeting the burden of proof, for example, by in a manner similar to Craig, simply throwing out a bunch of axioms as if they were kind of foundational statements and then uh, structuring the argument in such a way to where those have to work um, and you have to play by those rules in order to participate at all. And the idea is basically to, uh, they're, they're fond of phrases like bias and worldview and how do you know what they know, how do you know what you know and, and things like that when all you're asking for is simple evidence of the existence of God. The idea, the strategy essentially is to say, look, the evidence really, really is out there, but because of your atheistic worldview, you simply refuse to look at it. So you're the one who is standing in the way of this evidence that's readily available. And all it is is, is a very elaborate method of avoiding meeting the burden of proof by shifting the burden to the atheist. But it's, it's, it's being done in a different way. And uh, I think, I guess it works on in, in debate scenarios because if you're a skilled public speaker like a lot of these apologists are you can do that you can you know wow people and go hmm, he's got a really good point you can present utter nonsense it's, it's kind of about how you frame it the, yeah. the only things i really say about craig is that uh, uh craig is smart mm -hmm. he knows the subject and he's good at uh manipulating debates yeah. i would say um yeah but generally i am unimpressed and um that kind of goes for everybody who's Debating on, on well, I think that a, side. atheists aren't quite 
some atheists who accept these debates, I think, probably don't appreciate the degree to which pastors and ministers and apologists are professional public speakers. That is a, that is a, a craft that, if you are highly skilled at it, you know, you could you could sell sand to the Arabs, right? I mean, you can do anything with uh, with those kind of skills in place. And um, so, if you are up there competing with somebody who knows how to just slam an audience with points that might just be complete nonsense, but it's all style points. And then you get up there and I'm just going to lay out the facts and here's what, you know. Right away, you're at a disadvantage. Yeah, no there, how there many are facts some, are on your side? There are yeah, some. Also, Go ahead. He uh, kind of presents himself as like lead defender and like this kind of boisterous, he's yeah. number one guy. But yeah. I live here in Charlotte, mm -hmm. you know, Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. Most people haven't even heard of like Christian people. It's, it's one of those things, um, who's heard of who mm -hmm. or whom? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, if, for example, on many occasions, if I tell somebody, oh, I'm going to be debating so-and-so, uh, one of the first questions is, who's that? And uh, one of the differences is that I don't presume that anybody has actually heard of me, no matter how many debates I've done or how many YouTube videos uh, or hits on, on debates that I've done. Um, I don't think the Christian community even though I've heard about people who've taught about me and this show in their Sunday school class, uh, the Christian community at large doesn't know who I am. Um, and actually, there's probably a significant chunk of the atheist community that doesn't have any idea who I am or about this show or anything else. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it, it's kind of a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I appreciate the call, Ben. Okay, thank you, Matt. Sure. All right, take it easy. All right.